I've been struggling this year because I was like, can I can I go a whole year not talking about race? Oh, how are you gonna do that? I, I couldn't. I, didn't, I mean, listen, I gotta go. how's that working go. out for you? It, it's not working out. But right. In my mind, in my mind, let me just be honest. You know, I don't wake up every day going, oh, I'm black and black right. this and black, blackity black, black, black. I'm like, what what worlds are we tackling? What are we gonna create? Right? That's how I start my day. But you know, we're living in this world where it just we it's unavoidable. And I would not that I want to avoid race and races, I want it to go away. I want the racism to go away, right? I haven't figured that out yet, so we're still kind of working through it. I kind of like asking white people what does it mean to be white. That's that's I that starts to to me. That starts the 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 ball rolling because if you have to ponder a question, you're gonna have to find a solution for it. Huh. But for you doing this book, why does everything have to be about race? What was the impetus, Keith Boykin? And we're gonna get to these twenty five critical questions. But what made you want to write this? Well, you know, it's funny you say this too about like trying to not talk about race. Because uh, it reminds me of the times when I try to just sort of tune out and not pay attention. Uh, and it's really hard to do that sometimes. Now, I spent five years working in working for CNN, covering Donald Trump. Um, and it was exhausting. Uh, every day you wake up, there's new tweets, new decisions and policies, all kinds of chaos. And you just can't keep your mind wrapped around everything that's going on at any one given time. So for me... What inspired me to write the book was that there was just a lot of gaslighting that's been going on in the past five or six years or so about race. It kind of started around the time when Donald Trump was elected, when everybody was saying, oh, it's just economic anxiety. There was no racism involved in people supporting Donald Trump. And a lot of people like myself who were looking at what was going on in the country and looking at the Trump rallies and the way they were carrying on when he was first running for president and the Muslim ban and all the other stuff he was talking about. We were like, of course, this is about race. He doesn't, Donald Trump doesn't believe in any particular policies. He believes in white supremacy. And that's the message he's proje projecting to the public. So I had no intention of writing a book about this subject at all until a few years ago, I was out giving a speech, a diversity Black History Month speech. And at the end of my remarks, uh, a, a, a white man, college, I guess a grad student stood up and spoke and he asked me, why was I talking so much about race? <laughs> and I was like, well, this is a Black History Month event. If you can't talk about race at a Black History Month event, when, when are you supposed to talk about it? And we were just supposed to be silent and never actually, ever discuss this. And it occurred to me, this was part of the silencing of, of Black people. It's like they don't really, people in America don't really want to uh, have a conversation about these uncomfortable topics. Uh, they're afraid to talk about race because it brings up all the issues of the past and the present that people love to avoid. So I decided to bring together these different questions, you know, 25 different questions that, that people ask about race that black people get all the time. And they're really so annoying. Like, why do you need a white a black history month? We don't have a white history month. Um, and isn't affirmative action reversed racism? Uh, and um, I don't have a, I don't have a, a racist bone in my body. That's another one I hear. So I, I, I started hearing all these things from people. Oh, I just hear this. I, I, I heard some of this stuff just last week when Nikki Haley made her comment about uh, America's never been a racist country. Chris Christie defends her and says, Nikki Haley doesn't have a racist bone in her body. <laughs> I'm like, why are we still saying this, you know, in 2024? Bones aren't racist anyway. It's, it's, the, it's the behavior of people, the decisions and actions. And I think we're all infected by that. You can't live in America and not be affected by the racism that's pervasive in society. So there's so many different things that, that impacted me. And this, who knew that right now we'd be talking about Tim Scott Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis uh, all sort of caving into this these ideas of white supremacy in the middle of the 2024 Republican presidential primary. Why are you sure? Because I'm I'm certain we were we were having a discussion before you came in. Keith Boykin is here. Uh, his new book. Why does everything have to be about race? 25 arguments that won't go away. We're going to get into some of the 25 arguments. I'm certain that Trump is the cult leader of a, a white supremacist. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to borrow the language of the brother that called up of a white supremacist movement. But I don't think it's much of a movement because I think it's foundational to America. He's just the face of everything that makes them feel great about being white in America. I'm certain about that. 
I feel like there would be some pushback if we take that broad, broadly out there, Keith. How do we make that argument and codify it? Well, I, I think you're you're both right because I, I don't think Donald Trump started that. Um, I think it's it is foundational to who we are. Um, in my lifetime, I, I remember when Ronald Reagan was president, and Ronald Reagan kind of began this whole sort of movement in recent times. Um, you know, he talked about welfare and how black people and brown people were taking all these welfare dollars, and that becomes this way to sort of attack the the state, to attack the government. Lee Atwater, who's a famous Republican strategist, gave a, a discussion about this 20, 30 years ago. We talked about mm-hmm. how the Southern strategy evolved for the Republican Party, where first they start talking about the N-word, then they can't use that, and they start talking about busing, then they can't use that. Then they start talking about uh, tax cuts and government, you know, government reduction, spending, stuff like that. And it gets more abstract, so they don't really have to say what it is that they're that they're really trying to achieve. Then we move to 2016. And Donald Trump says it all out loud. He's take he doesn't he doesn't whisper it. He says the quiet part out loud. But this is part of who we have been since the country was was founded, which makes Nikki Haley's comment so so bizarre because she talked about Thomas Jefferson signing or writing the Declaration of Independence. Jefferson was an enslaver who enslaved hundreds of people and raped a fourteen year old black girl. How is that representative of of America never being a racist country? George Washington was another enslaver with hundreds of slaves at his slave plantation, and and he took the teeth from his slaves and put them in his mouth. Uh, you know, the the Constitution of the United States said that black people were three fifths of a human being. The Dred Scott decision in 1857 said that black people were not even citizens of our country. We had to fight a civil war that ended up with the assassination of the president who tried to end slavery. I mean, we had another Supreme Court decision that said that black people could be and were legally allowed to be segregated in separate but equal facilities, inferior schools. Uh, how do you say this country is not built on race? Everything has been about race. And Donald Trump is leading that movement to make, when when he says make America great again, he means make white America supreme again. Make white America not have to feel guilty again about the past. Make white America uh, feel privileged again so they can say what they, people can say what they want to say and not suffer the repercussions or consequences of doing so. That's a disastrous place for us to be as a country that's becoming more open and more inclusive. By the year 2044, white people will no longer be the majority in this country. And I think a lot of people are deathly afraid of that. So they're doing everything they can to claw onto power and prevent any change from happening. Hmm. 866 Well, the only problem with that is if we if we start to throw darts at this notion of whiteness, then what would it mean? Because I'm like, what's going to happen? South Africa didn't have a problem with it not being majority white. <laughs> it managed to to rule uh, with an iron fist for decades without having a majority rule. Texas doesn't have the majority, uh, you know, doesn't have the numbers, but somehow has managed to rule Texas, uh, you know, despite not having the numbers. Uh, so is this a numbers game? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, Sina, you're, you're looking yeah. concerned. Yes. <laughs> Generally concerned. Uh, I want, I have two questions for you. One, there's a thing that's happening with my culture, the Iranian people that live in America here today. Uh, and that other kind of middle Eastern people is I've always checked the other box mm. my whole life. Cause I've always felt like another, and that really? was fine. Wait, with me. hold on. I just assumed you, you checked white. No, never. I never felt white. Okay. I like. That. I always I checked so. other, and I'd okay. always complain about it. That the why isn't there a box for us? And so, uh, but what's happening though, to your point, Karen, is a lot of a lot of Iranians on they're putting white. So like this idea of whiteness, because it's so abstract, is globbing on to more cultures. The Italians weren't white when they came here. They merged with Bank of Italy, merged with Bank of America, and then all the Italians were white. And so, how do you see that? changing over time you were saying that white people won't be in the majority in the coming years but what about this counterbalance that's happening where whiteness is kind of globbing on to different things to different people yeah you're exactly right that's been going on for hundreds of years now whiteness is an evolving concept first of all first of all we all we all the race is a social construct yeah, uh yeah. that for most of the civilization there was no such thing as black or white 
uh, as races. And then we start maybe five or 600 years ago, and we start to see that begin to become uh, a part of a reality uh, in our consciousness. Uh, and then you move to the period roughly in the, I'm, I'm going to forget my numbers here and the dates here, but roughly around, I think, the time of the late 17th century, uh, Bacon's Rebellion era, when um, we start to see the white planter class in America is afraid of the idea of the poor whites aligning with poor blacks and poor indigenous people and poor brown people. And so they create this notion of whiteness so that even the poorest white people can buy into this belief system that they are above and beyond or better than other people. Uh, and they slowly assign other people or allow other groups of people to come into it. As you were right, I mean, Iranian Americans are, certainly weren't considered to be part of that. Italian Americans weren't considered to be a part of that. Irish Americans for a long time were excluded. Uh, but it, there has been an evolution over time. And each group of people who come to the country who are white-ish or white adjacent eventually are able to, to uh, sort of morph into that white identity. That was never an opportunity for, Afri for African Americans who were Black. Um, if you're African American like Elon Musk, that's a different thing. <laughs> but, but, but for Black people, we've never had that option to sort of identify as a part of this majority culture. So we, have, we even have immigrants who come here now, immigrants who have no experience with America's racial past, who align themselves with immigrants who are people of color, who align themselves with the white majority because they see that as being the party of power, the, the, the group of people who are who are uh, the, the the ruling class, and they want to be associated with that, not with the people who are part of a disfavored class. So it's a very complex psychological jujitsu game that is being played in order to convince people that they are white or black. James Baldwin talks about this whole concept of whiteness and, and how it actually hurts white people as much as it hurts black people. And, and the white people have to live under this sort of delusion that they are, that they are this superior group of people when there's no evidence to back that up. But it, it's a mythology that hurts them as much as it hurts us. Yes, uh, but you won't convince anybody that identifies as white that that's the case. Oh, what an evil! Well, I think you could probably convince some people who, who. I mean, I don't think you can't say you can't say nobody would, would believe that. But it, it, you know, it's just, there, there are some people who are, who are never going to believe you no matter what you said. And I don't really try to re reach those people. I, a lot of those people are Trump supporters. They they, they believe they believe that, that Trump got more votes than Biden did, and he had the biggest inauguration in history, and and he never never told a lie. You know, they believe that stuff. I don't care about those people because they're delusional. But there are there are there is a segment of people out there who are, I think, persuadable but have been misinformed. And those are the people I'm more interested in. I'm interested in helping black people mm -hmm. and people of color, and I'm interested in reaching those people who are persuadable who haven't yet been uh, haven't yet been informed. All right. Well, I don't think they exist. Uh, but Keith Boykin <laughs> is here. No, you know, come on, those are the independents. They, no. Those are the swing voters.